Many viewers have asked me, what should I read if I don't know where to start? Now I've previously made a video called 10 Esoteric Books for Beginners, which you can find a link to in the description. But that's more to do with what to read if this is a completely new subject to you. An analogy might be the wax on, wax off scene from The Karate Kid, where the kid is actually learning without realising that he's learning. So the books in that list don't seem to have an esoteric theme, which is why they're perfect for the absolute beginner. But the topics that they introduce they get the reader thinking about the kinds of questions that esoteric studies attempt to answer. For today's video, I wanted to pick out just a few books that explicitly claim to introduce magic for the absolute beginner. Now, while all of the books on this list do accurately introduce magic from a practical point of view, at least a few of them do expect you to have, at minimum, a passing understanding of what magic actually is. So while they do provide an initiation, they don't necessarily provide you with an introduction. And the first book on my list is such a book which can be a little baffling for the average layperson, The Golden Door the original account of the teachings, rites and ceremonies of the Hermetic Order. This is probably the most widely recognised book on magical initiation. The Golden Dawn were hugely influential at the end of the 19th century and in the early 20th century. They are still going, actually, under the auspices of Chick and Sandra Tabitha Cicero. And in fact, for absolute novices, I might rather recommend the Cicero's self-initiation into the Golden Dawn tradition, a complete curriculum of study for both the solitary magician and the working magical group. That's quite a mouthful and quite a long title, but it's um, a good description of what's inside. So while the former book, The Golden Dawn by Israel Rigardi, really is just a documentation of the initiation processes and documents of The Golden Dawn, this self-initiation by uh, Chicken Tabitha Cicero is designed for the modern seeker who doesn't necessarily have access to a secret lodge or easy access anyway. Now, staying with the Golden Dawn tradition, if that's the particular path you're interested in, I can strongly recommend a duology of books by John Michael Greer, The Circles of Power, An Introduction to Hermetic Magic, followed by Paths of Wisdom, Kabbalah in the Golden Dawn tradition. And these two books have widely been recognised as modern classics, works of genius by somebody who clearly knows the Golden Dawn tradition in and out and has worked within it and is comfortable with it and is also a master teacher who can really make all of this material fascinating, easily approachable, easy to understand and easy to memorise. Now, if you prefer a rather irreverent approach, then I recommend the Chicken Kabbalah duology. That's Chicken Kabbalah and Son of Chicken Kabbalah, both written by Lon Milo Duquette. The first book is an introduction to Kabbalah, which some might call the backbone of the Western magical tradition. And then the second book is a three-part initiation. It's a full three-degree initiation designed by, well, probably one of the most well-respected specialists and uh, practitioners of the Western magical tradition still alive today. Now, while there's not much in this world that Lon Milo Duquette takes more seriously than magic, you should also know that that's not saying very much. Uh, his humour is pervasive. And while for me, well, it was exactly what I was looking for, I do understand that for some people it can be a little off-putting. People imagine magic as this very dour, very solemn topic. So the Chicken Kabbalah is very much a raspberry in the direction of all of that. But you come out of it on the other side knowing more about the esoteric Western tradition than most so-called specialists. It really is that good. I will briefly mention Modern Magic also uh, by Donald Michael Craig. I haven't read Modern Magic, although I do understand that it is a reference nowadays. My understanding is that it's very well written, but I have heard some complaints that it can set you up with some bad habits, specifically with regards to the way the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram is described. As I say, not having read it, it's difficult for me to make an actual judgment, but you should know that many people absolutely love this book and it's been the starting point for many modern practitioners. Okay, so next up we've got High Magic by Damien Eccles. Now my guess is that the aforementioned High Magic, what, what that book has been doing for people since the 80s, this High Magic by Damien Eccles, I, I've I've got a feeling it might be doing for new magicians from now on, maybe for the next decade or so. 
If you haven't had the opportunity to watch The Midnight Gospel on Netflix yet, then I strongly recommend that you do. The third episode features Damien Eccles, and he talks about how he spent 20 years incarcerated for a murder that he hadn't committed. In fact, he was on death row. And this book, High Magic, talks about the ceremonial magic practices that he developed on death row, which eventually at least in his words, got him out of that lethal situation. He's got some very interesting new takes on old concepts and, well, I recommend checking out his YouTube video, in fact, uh, which I'll link down in the description. I'll be reviewing his new book, Angels and Archangels, very shortly. Okay, so starting to transition a little bit away from the Golden Dawn tradition, we've got the Magical Philosophy books by Melita Denning and Osborne Phillips. Now these books came out in the 70s and uh, while most of them are completely out of print nowadays, the two most well-respected books from that series, number two and three, that's The Sword and the Serpent and Mysteria Magica, those two are regularly reprinted and can easily be found in high quality paperback. So absolutely following the pattern of the previous two duologies that I mentioned, the first book's subtitle is The Twofold Kabbalistic Universe, and the second book's title is Fundamental Techniques of High Magic. If you've been watching my Esoteric Saturday videos for the past couple of weeks, you'll know that I've got a very high respect for Osborne and Phillips' work. Their corpus deviates quite a bit from the Golden Dawn materials. They call their stream the Aurum Solis, the Golden Sun, and they seem to have managed to fix some of the inconsistencies, at least that I've found in the Golden Dawn tradition. So I'd say that that's a very solid introduction, particularly for anyone who's not too fussed about not being part of the mainstream and who cares a little bit more about consistency and accuracy. All right, so next we've got Techniques of High Magic, A Manual of Self-Initiation by Francis King and Stephen Skinner. Now what's peculiar, or at least of note, about this particular volume is that Francis King and Stephen Skinner have managed to completely cut out any reference to Kabbalah in their overview of Western magic. Now many people like that very much about this book, and well, I don't know Francis King at all, but certainly from what I know about Dr. Stephen Skinner, I'd say that's very consistent with the scientific approach that comes across in his other volumes. From what I've managed to gather by reading his books and listening to him in interviews, he seems quite keen to dismiss the spiritual dimensions of uh, ceremonial magic. And while that's not my approach, I can see how that can appeal to a very wide audience. Now, if this sterile, um, sterile doesn't have to be a bad thing, but if this um, scientific approach to magic appeals to you and you're more interested in the phenomenology of the practice than you are in exploring your relationship to divinity, for example, then I can wholeheartedly recommend Chaos Magic by Andrea Vitimus. It's an A to Z course in producing magical effects through slight variations in your behavior. The book is presented like a series of experiments and you're encouraged to, well, very much use the scientific method of changing just one little thing and then observing the differences, the effects, and keeping track of the reproducible nature of these experiments. I know that some people have complained about the industrial, sterile feel of this book, but once again that might be exactly what other people are after. All right, next on our list is a book called Six Ways, Approaches and Entries for Practical Magic by Aidan Wachter. Now, I'd say that this is the quintessence of introductions because it's a very slim book and yet contained within its pages is a key to a world of discovery. Techniques are provided, techniques that are very simple, that anyone can do, and ways of thinking are also provided. And combining the two together, you can come to your own practice. Aidan's very keen to emphasize, this is what I do, and it's not necessarily what you should do. This is how I do it, and this is why I do it. Now, you can think of something similar that's going to be good for you. And I really respect that about him. Now, a lot of the techniques that he describes in this, I've adapted and incorporated into my own practice, and they're incredibly powerful, incredibly useful, and I'm very grateful, in fact, for his work. You can see a full review of this book that I've linked down below. Now, finally, we've got three books by Josephine McCarthy, and they're the Quarea Initiation books, The Apprentice, The Initiate, and The Adept. Now, what's wonderful about these books is that they're free to read online through the Quarea website, which I've linked down below. However, many people really appreciate having hard copies, and they are available for sale as paperbacks also. 
Now this course is designed to be a self-study course and it's very well known for being incredibly thorough, incredibly grueling. It's an enormous amount of work. However, if you can get through the apprentice part of the course, the first third of the course, then you can submit the materials that you'll have generated in the process and start getting some help from the people in Quirea. However, that condition of submitting all the required materials is sine qua non. Josephine McCarthy has got a very interesting personality and I recommend checking out what she has to say on interviews given on podcasts like The Glitch Bottle. But now we're entering the realm of podcasts and I think that that's a topic for another video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for sticking through to the end. Please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and to subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me and I'll be back very soon with another video. Take care. Bye bye.